My beloved salespeople, business owners, welcome to Sales 5X. Let's do 5X in sales in the next one year. This is Anmol Garg, and today I'm going to talk about five closing techniques. In the last video, I spoke about the importance of closing. So in case you've not watched that, make sure you watch that first because there I talk about the mindset of closing. Now, here's the big deal. Once you have the mindset of closing, how do you close? Most salespeople uh, close in a very bad way. Uh, they ask the customer, Mr. Customer, do you want this product or not? And that is possibly the worst close in the history of mankind, right? Uh, you cannot have a close as bad as that because the customer will obviously say no. There are effective ways of closing in on the customer and this video we're going to talk about five of them. All right, let's get started. The first one is uh, the famous puppy dog close. Now, all this content is nothing new. Uh, the likes of Brian Tracy, Zig Ziglar, Tom Hopkins have been talking about that. So I've just summarized all of this information just for you. Coming back to the puppy dog clothes, uh, let me give you an example. Say you own a pet store. Little puppies in the pet store and uh, say a kid walks in along with his dad and the kid is really excited because he wants to take a puppy home. The dad is equally not excited because instead of the puppy, he sees all the mess which the puppy is going to create. And uh, you're going to have a hard time convincing the dad that, look, uh, you know, why don't uh, you buy this puppy? A puppy dog close is something very interesting where what you would do is give the puppy to the dad and say, you know what, why don't you take it back home over the weekend? And if you don't like it, come back on Monday. You could always return it. And the dad goes home, takes the puppy. Uh, he's definitely not liking any of this. But since he wants to please his kid, he just takes it over the weekend. He's thinking, look, just two days, I'll come back. But guess what happens over the weekend? The dad develops an emotional bond with the little pup running around. Come on, we are all humans. It's, it's, it's easily, easy to get bonded with people who are around us for a long amount of time, right? That's my philosophy. You, if you stay close to anyone for at least two days, you'll fall in love with them. You know? We are all people uh, who are good at heart. Circumstances might make us different, but we are all really good at heart. That's what I firmly believe. Uh, so what happens is the dad loves the puppy. I know there is mess around, but then he thinks, you know what, it's fine. The kid's liking it. I like it too. Let's keep the puppy. And that is an effective puppy dog close. So if you're in a similar business where you can actually give the product to the customer to actually use it, get a chance to have a look, feel at the product, you know, this is a great way to actually sell. Remember, people don't buy for logical reasons. They buy for emotional reasons. I'll say that again. People don't buy for logical reasons. They buy for emotional reasons. You know what? You never buy a luxury car, uh, you know, as a piece of metal. It, it, you buy it because the way it makes you feel, right? You don't pick up uh, an Audi or a BMW or a Merc. Uh, you know, they're just metal pieces end of the day, machines. But then the whole feeling of owning one, being inside one, driving one, showing it off to your neighbors and friends, that's the feeling that you're buying, right? So people buy for emotional reasons and not logical reasons. So go back to your pitch, find out how much of your pitch to your customer is logic and how much of it is emotion. You'll be surprised that, you know, most pitches are close to about 95, 98% just logic. There's very little emotion part of it. And as I said, most people buy for emotional reasons. Right, so a good mix is, a, you know, about 65, 70% emotion and 30% logic. And uh, that'll go a long way in helping you sell things. The second close is the Benjamin Franklin close. Benjamin Franklin, the great US president. Now he was known as a very logical and a rational man. Before he would take any decision, what he would do is take a sheet of paper out, draw a line right in the center. On the left side, he would write the pros. And on the right side, he would write the cons. And then he would fill this up and then take a decision. That's how we all actually think. So this close is about using the same technique. So when you're closing in on the close, all you have to do is pull a sheet of paper out right in front of the customer very casually and tell the customer, you know, Mr. Customer, let's forget about all of this. Let's just write down the pros and the cons and then let's see, you know, which outweighs the other and then I think we can make a decision. The customer also feels comfortable. So you actually do it. The pros, of course, you write it. You highlight it to the customer. The cons, of course, you don't say. The customer tells all the cons that he has, which gives you another opportunity to know what the customer is thinking. So he writes, say, maybe the price point is very high or uh, he says that, you know what, I don't really trust the company. 
So you know that you need to now defend these points, right? So once you've defended these points, uh, you've got a lot of long list of pros, fewer cons, and then you tell the customer, Mr. Customer, uh, the decision looks very simple. Let's go ahead. All right, the third close is the alternate close. Now this close is used a lot in retail stores. Uh, I'm sure if you've gone to uh, you know, buy a shirt, the sales rep out there says, so would you like the shirt in red or green? Right? They don't give you an option between something and nothing. It's always between something or something, right? Great way to close a customer. Try this out. Try this out next time around. You know, when you're selling your product, you could say, so would you pay by check or by demand draft? Would you make an online payment or would you pay us by cash? Would you like this to be delivered today or the next week, right? So an alternate close uh, is, is a great way to actually test what's going on in the customer's mind. So if he says, look, I want the green shirt, uh, most likely he's going to buy. If he says, look, I think I'll take the delivery next week, most likely he's going to buy. If he resists, means there is some objection which you've not clarified. So this can also be a, a test close for you to really know what's happening in the mind of the customer. All right, the fourth close is the relevant story close. Now, as humans, we all want social proof. If he's doing it, then probably I'll do it. If she's doing it, then probably I'll do it. A relevant story close is when you cite an example of another customer who is pretty much in the same industry or the vertical as the current customer you're selling to. And you give an example of this customer that look, even they were apprehensive, they had these issues which you're facing right now. We gave them the solution and they are loving it. You know, they're saving costs, they're increasing revenue. That's the same story that you tell this customer and this customer feels, hey, uh, th that's right, even I am facing the same problems. If it's worked for them, then it'll work for me as well. Now, remember, you can't fake this. You can't just cook up stories of customers, you know, who you haven't served, but you're talking about it to other customers. That's beyond the line of ethics, right? Cite the example of a customer who you are working with and is in the similar industry as the current customer that you're dealing with. It's a great close. I work with sales professionals, helps them increase sales by 15% just by using this close. So make sure you read up of all the clients you've worked with in the past, bring them in in your current pitches will go a long way in closing deals. All right, the last close that I'm talking about, the fifth close, it is the ascending close. Now, the ascending close works in a very interesting way. All you have to do is get the customer to say yes, 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 multiple times, and guess what? They'll end up buying your product. You know, I'm sure all of you have heard of how they used to sell encyclopedias back in the days where uh, a sales rep would come over to your house and they would ask you, sir, do you value higher education? And you're like, yes, of course. And do you want your kids to uh, go beyond the curriculum and learn more? And you say, yes. So why don't you take this book, keep it in your living room, and uh, we don't want to sell this to you, but in case your neighbor walks by, just tell them you got it from us. And you would go like, yes, I, I'll do that. You keep saying yes, and in about 42 yeses, you've already bought the product. Very, very powerful close. So when you're closing in on the customer, at least get him to say six yeses. Right, towards the end, and there's a very good chance uh, if these questions are framed in the right way, if they hit your emotion and logic, uh, the customer will end up buying. So yes to the ascending close. All right, that's about it from my end. Remember, a good salesperson knows these closes, a great salesperson actually uses it. So start using these closes, uh, and, and let me know in the comment section uh, the kind of uh, impact, the benefits that you've had after using these closes. I would love to hear from you. If they've not worked out for you, do again comment because I would like to know the circumstances and we could work together and see how these closes can actually help you go a long way. Thank you so much. This is Anmol from Sales 5X. Let's do 5X in the next one year.